Hi guys and welcome to a late afternoon repot sesh here at Trisha's Orchid Life. And I haven't said this in a while, but I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed. I really appreciate it. I was kind of looking at my numbers the other day and I noticed I'm over 700 subscribers now. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And if you haven't and you end up enjoying this video and you want to watch these ladies here that we are about to repot for the season, they will be grown outside. I'll link uh, the video below as well as put it up here somewhere um, where we just talked about them the other day. But in that video, I was talking about Miss Elaine Taylor Curl Smith and how she needed to be repotted. Now she is a monofoliate um, and she is very top heavy. I do have her tied down quite a bit just the least little bit of wind and she tends to lean in the pot that she's in and lo and behold after I did the video I said well let me pull her out let me give her a good um, cow mag soak for this upcoming repot and look what we have she is can you see the little root right there look at that is that not just it was meant to be right I said it and now it's meant to be I have this glove on to protect my my wounds. I have a scar here that is closing up and then another one across my wrist that's still a little open so I'm trying not to get things into them. I'm not having a texture issue today so that's not why I'm wearing them today. And she, if you look in here she does have some roots right down in all the way to the bottom of the pot and then I don't know if you can see it or not but she does have looks like styrofoam in there. I bought this one uh, from Brookside Orchids actually even though it says Curl Smith as far as the the cultivar but I actually got this from Brookside Orchids. I don't have the date on it. I'm pretty sure it was in 2022, 2021 the latest, but I'm, I'm going to go with 2022. If I can remember to go back into my purchase history with Brookside, I will see when I purchased her. And if I find it, I'll post it again. So let's see, what are we going to do? The new root is right there. So I'm actually going to try to pull her out from all of this back growth back here. And let's see what we have. So, yep, she does have some styrofoam down at the bottom. She has cool, nice bark. This bark is actually still pretty good. I might crock the bottom with it. I don't know. May not even take a lot of the media off around here because it is still really good. Yeah, it doesn't have a, a bad smell, but I'm what I'm curious though is you know, that spag plug that sometimes we find in there. So, yep, she has some styrofoam. And I am going to take this old growth right here because she was way down in the media. So she's probably a climber too, just like the um, Elaine Taylor over there. Not the Elaine Taylor, the, uh, oh my goodness, Copper Queen. And we're going to we're going to go ahead. I'm going to repot her too. I might do her off camera. I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what kind of roots she grew in that uh, nursery pot because I can't see in there. Just take off that styrofoam. Quite a bit of styrofoam at the bottom of this actually. All right, there we go. And Colorado still has that crazy weather. Had a hailstorm the other night. We've had rain literally every day for the last two weeks. And next week is no exception. The good news is, though, it's been in the mid 80s, not 80s, mid 70s to low 80s. So that means that during the day, at least, it's nice and warm. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to take that one off. Well, she kind of came off on her own anyway. And then do I want to take those off? You know what? I am going to take these two off because she will end up with one, two, because this is a fairly new growth that just finished as well on this side, which is where the new roots are coming from. She has this new growth right here around my thumb. And... That will leave her plenty of backup. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off. Should I pot it with? Let's see. Let me check the roots on here. I know you can't do back bulbs, but let's see. No, those roots are no good. But the good thing, aha, now that we can get into the rhizome, is 
we have us a nice clean rhizome. So that is always a good thing, isn't it? We all do it. As soon as it, as soon as that rhizome breaks, we're like, yep, it is nice. Let's see. What else do we have? We've got a couple of roots here in the back that are no longer serving any purpose. So let's just take those off real quick. Let's see, got a couple of more right here. I wonder if I can, yeah, I can just pull those off. That one is not doing anything. And it looks like she does have a nice branching root system. Now, this one, I'm going to, so Ken over at the Orchid Supply Store is carrying some new pots. And I thought when I saw them, I was like, oh yeah, I, I use those pots. But I don't think they're the same pot. And I'm gonna show you why. Because on this six inch right here, there are holes. Do you see them? Let me put her down real quick protecting that new growth. They have holes in them. Can you see the little holes? There's four holes so that you can just go ahead and make it a hanging basket. The ones I use don't have that. But other than that, I mean, it looks exactly the same. But my six inch pots that I have like this do not have the hanging holes. So I don't know if that's a new thing because the ones I have, I've had for a few years. But you can go to Orchid Supply Store and get these. They have lots and lots of ventilation to them. They're, kind, they're clear, but they're opaque, so they're not completely clear. Excuse me. And if you decide to go and buy pots and maybe some media, because the media we're going to use today is a combination of fir bark, orchiata bark, perlite and some charcoal all at the orchid supply store if you grow hydroponically whether it is orchids or house plants the leca omg i've repotted a couple of my girls that i grow in leca into that and i'm telling you guys that is some quality quality leca there hydrogen pebbles all right let's see I'm not going to be too picky with the roots just get the ones that I know aren't any good. But considering that she's been in that nursery pot since I got her, she's doing really well. Look at those roots. Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they just gorgeous? Now my plan was to put her in here, in this one. So this is a, I believe a four inch, not four inch. Maybe this is the five inch and that's the six. I'm horrible with pot sizes as most of you already know. So I th I'm thinking to put her in here because that'll give her plenty of room to grow. And then to keep her from getting knocked over, I put some rock already at the bottom to kind of weigh the pot itself and then kind of have her in this ceramic pot to allow for the airflow and, you know, make it a little prettier. So I think that's what we'll do. All right. That's that one. Now let's take the other one out, the Copper Queen, and see what she's doing. You know what? We'll just let her stand, stand in here. Let me be mindful of those roots that are coming because I'll get a little excited and not pay attention and break that new root, and God knows when it's going to come another one. Even though, you know, if it's got the one, it should have more coming. All right, so Miss Copper Queen, which... I don't really want to put this in here because that media is not that old. Sorry about kicking that. It's not that old, so if I can reuse it, I will. So I'm going to put it in a, a fresh pot. But this one I bought at the uh, Nick's Garden Center in here in Colorado. And it is the Copper Queen. Very, very pretty uh, yellow-orange flower. You can, I know Ken had it for sale at uh, the Orchid Supply Store website. So if you want to go see if maybe he still has it, go check it out. Get that 12%, guys. I do see some root activity. New little root tip right there trying to pop out. So we'll see if we can save that. And where are we going to grab this from? So we have new roots there, a new growth there. Let's grab it from the back, right back in here. Because I might be able to take this kind of wanky leaf that is in the way out now. Let's see, let's tip her. Like I said, this media is not that old. I just want to put her into a 
bigger pot, AKA this pot here, so that I can monitor the root system. And I can take this portion off now because she's got plenty of backup. When I put her in here last year, I just basically took her out and put her in the pot. Didn't really take off any of the, the older growths or anything like that. But like I said, she's a climber, so we don't want that in there. Let me just cut into that rhizome there and see what we have. And oh my, she is entangled. Her roots are entangled with those. Oh, there we go. All right. And again, we have this a nice clean rhizome. So I am happy about that. Now this is just large, medium. This is kind of just what I had on hand at the time. She was trying, she was growing a new growth and growing out of the pot and I wanted to get ahead of the game. And then this new growth right here just never did anything. But she has grown. So since repotting her last year, she grew these two growths here, this one and the one over here by my thumb. And then she grew these two growths. No, these two growths right here and then this one right here. And because she is growing new roots off of this bifoliate, so she has monofoliate and bifoliate leaves, I want to go ahead and get her into some media that's a little bit deeper because she also has another nice new growth coming up right there that I just noticed. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to drop that into the bottom of the pot I'm going to put her in. Make sure that, uh, no, we have to take some of that out. Oh, and these have beautiful little air cones as well at the bottom. So again, to help with that aeration at the bottom of your pot. Let's see. If I, yes, that's a little bit better. All right. So let me put some fungi at the bottom to help with healthy root growth and healthy pot. Not sure yet if it is working because I did just start using it. And yes, I'm just sprinkling it in there. I left my little teaspoony thing that I usually use. So what I like to do with the stakes now, if I can get them right into a hole to help hold it. So, um, and Loki is getting a bath. So here in just a little bit, he might start running around and acting all crazy. And you might hear the little pitcher patcher of feet. So that will be him running from the tub, even though he's already been in it. And there is a root I need to cut off. All right, not doing much of a cleanup on this one. Like I said, this one is more of an up pot than it is a repot. Let's find that little aeration hole there. There we go. Actually, let's get one with a point so we can really get in there. And if you can get your stake in before you get your orchid into the pot, that kind of helps. This way you don't end up jamming brand new root. I've done that. All right, let's get that out of the way and move this over. Oh, let's just use the rest of this real quick. And then I'll fast forward over this part because we've all seen people repot orchids before. All right, there we go. So what I did is I just took that leaf hoping to keep it from getting all leaned over the pot and it's still kind of leaning so I'll have to I'll have to play around with it and see, see if I can get it. It's already, this is the one that bloomed. So maybe if I can get it situated right, maybe tie it to that stake. I don't know. I'm just not going to deal with it too much because I don't want to break it. All right, let me get a little bit more media here. And she does look a little buried, but she's not. The rhizome is still just sitting right on top of the media. Um, right back here. The older part, now that I cut it, we might have activated something back here. So we might actually get some growth going on back here too. If not, that's fine. She's still sitting in the middle, makes it a little easier to put her back on the shelf come winter time when I have to put them all back inside because living in Colorado, I cannot grow my orchids outside year round because we get snow, that white stuff. I don't like that word usually don't even like saying it, but all right. So now those new roots are not in the media, but they can start going 
it's close enough to the media now that they can go into it. All right, and this one is actually going to sit in this lovely white pot here, again, to help hold it steady. And there are rocks at the bottom of that one as well. I will change the date. Um, so this is 22 that I bought her at Nick's Nursery back in 2022. I'm pretty sure it was late spring, early fall, or uh, late summer, early fall last year. Move her out of the way. Now it is about 75, 76 here in the house and I'm wearing long sleeves and a jacket. I am cool. I know most of you guys would think that would be hot or at least comfortable, but for me that's a little still chilly. So I am wearing a jacket in my house in the middle of spring in Colorado. So Yep, so Loki is now out of his bath. So again, if you hear pitcher pattering on the wood floor, that is what that is about. He does not, he's getting better. He's getting better. He's uh, not as bad as he used to be. He still doesn't like his baths, but he has pretty sensitive skin. So we do have to give him a bath more often. Loki, Loki, that's enough. Come here, come here. Come here. It's okay, Bubba. Get in your bed. Get in your bed. All right. And you know what I forgot to do? I opened this. I said, I'm going to do this so I don't forget it. And I still forgot it. So I'm just going to sprinkle some right up at the top. And then I will push it in later. But at least now it's on there. And give me just a second here. Just got to check that because it felt funny. All right, let's see, how is this one going to sit? And since I used my steak for her, let me just grab, because I've got, got them right here in a nice handy dandy spot here. All right, and we're gonna put just a little bit of media down at uh, the bottom again. And throwing it on the table, that's all right. Let's sprinkle some mycorrhizal fungi. And I'm not going to water these ladies until tomorrow because I did soak them. And with cutting the into, well, not cutting, but ripping open the rhizome, I don't want to open any infection in there. So it'll be tomorrow or maybe even the next day before they get any water. And we have another root that needs to be cut off. Let me just double check these real quick. That one is, well, that one is questionable to about right here. Let me just look at it real quick. Yep, that one looks okay now. All right, I think that is all we need to do. Maybe cut some of the older ones off that were close to the rhizome that we just cut off. Yep, that one's okay. And then we got us a nice little bunch here. I thought we cleaned this already. Well, I guess I didn't do a very good job of it, did I? There we are. All right, let's see how she's going to sit in here. So we have the new growth here, two new growths here. That one is the one growing the, you know, what? if I take, I wonder if I take this piece of bark off of here, if I can get these roots to separate a little bit better so that I can spread the roots out. Let's see what we can do here. Just take my thumb and there we go. i put it in there. It's a pretty good piece. So the media in here is not bad. And there was no spag moss, no plug, anything like that, which is something we are all concerned about. Well, I say we're, you know, I say we're all concerned, like we all think the same things. I'm pretty sure we don't all think the same thing, but most of us do not like those, those plugs in there. And that's one of the things we, we are looking for during a repot is this little nasty plugs, especially if the orchid has just been taken out of whatever they grew them in and then popped them into more media without taking that plug out. And you think it's an all bark. So you're watering it because the bark is dry, wondering why it's still not hydrating and the roots are dead because it's the moss. The culprit is the moss. Let me see if I can separate them a little bit more. So, cause I just want to get it a little deeper into uh, this pot. And there are roots that are kind of stuck together, but I don't want to just twist and break them. 
all the while watching that one new root popping out there. And I know bi uh, bifoliates are a little more picky and finicky than monofoliates, but I don't want to set them up for failure right away, you know? If we can give them some success at the beginning, then why not? Why set yourself up for failure when you can set yourself up for success? And we're just gonna do that. All right, let's see. Now can I spread it out just a wee bit? And then some of these older root tips are actually putting out new root tips. Can you see those? All right, let's see. And this one, yeah, if I just twist it and push. Let's see, twist it a little bit more. There we go. And then we'll just use the media to put the rest of that down. And then this way, let's see, yep. And then she can, now she's low enough that once that root really starts taking off, it'll go down into the media a little bit sooner than had I just left her alone. I'll be back. All right, and then I did something that I, I'm about to do something that I said we should do earlier if we can, which is stake our lovely orchid before we get the media in there. And of course, I didn't follow my own advice. I got so focused on trying to get her into the pot. Let's see, do this, and then we'll go through here. Let's see. Just, where's that root? There it is. Um, go this way. All right, there we are. And did we do it? I think we did it. Let's, there we go. Now those roots have an opportunity. And since it's just starting, I'm not gonna cover it up, but I'm gonna put that media really close so that it feels the need to attach to it. And this way, hopefully now it doesn't get knocked, you know, knocked over. She's still a little top heavy, but now she's got a wider base as opposed to this. Height wise, it's pretty much the same height, but at least now she's got room to spread her roots out. Not too bad, not too bad. Put her in here. And this is the Elaine Taylor, Potanera Elaine Taylor, or since Potanera is now a Catlea, it's Catlea, uh, Elaine Taylor. And I'll put today's date on this one as well. And once again, we forgot the fertilizer. You know, that's okay. Because this is all I have to do anyway, if I forget, is just put it at the top and then I just will keep wiggling it, wiggling it. And then of course, as I water, it will settle itself in. Well, now we get to see what these ladies are going to do. Hopefully, fingers crossed, these roots will go down into the media and perhaps we might get a bloom this season. The Copper Queen I know is blooming size. I purchased her with a bloom. The um, Elaine Taylor Curl Smith is supposed to be blooming size. I have yet to see any bloom. She didn't come in a uh, bloom. I have not had her bloom since I purchased her. Again, I'm pretty sure it was in 2022 because I wouldn't have left her in this nursery pot for two years. I'm, that's just not me. I used to pot right away, at least now I like to wait. Yay me, right? Um, anywho, everybody have a beautiful day and thanks for joining me for this mid-afternoon pot. and I will see you guys later.